Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, I would look at taxpayer penalties part one of two. This topic is typically covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam rec section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. Please get that money back. Um, what they would do, uh, if the taxpayer does not make a good faith estimate and payment, the extension itself may be voided. Simply put, they would say, well, we don't accept that extension. Okay, so when the return is filed by extended due date with a much larger amount due than had been estimated, just basically they will waive, they will not accept that that extension. So if you're in practice, just pay a little bit more to be on the safe side. Now, like during any month, sometime what happened, not sometime, both taxes would apply during any month in which both failure to file penalty and failure to pay apply, the failure to file penalty is reduced by the amount of the failure to pay. So the failure to pay is basically, it's given as a credit. And let's work an example to see how this works. Jason filed his tax return 10 days after the due date. It doesn't matter, it's less than a month. They are late one month. Along with the return, he remits a check for $5,000. So that's what was due, which is the balance of the tax he owes. Disregarding any interest liability, so we're gonna ignore interest. Jason total penalties are as follow. Failure to pay, is 0 0.5 times 5,000, which is $25. Failure to file, 5,000 times 5, 250. Now what's gonna happen? Jason will get the credit for the $25 failure to pay penalty, and failure to file penalty is net is 225, plus the failure to pay penalty, in total they'll pay 250, okay? The penalties for one full month are imposed even though Jason was delinquent by only 10 days. It does not matter, unlike the method used to compute interest. Now, when we compute interest, any part of the month is treated as a, as, as a whole month. So, unlike the method used to compute interest, okay? So, this is, it's different rules, and we'll talk about int interest later on when we, you know, when we look at the penalties and the interest involved. Let's take a look at another example. Well, these penalties can be avoided, actually. The taxpayer showed the failure to file or the failure to pay was due to a reasonable cause and, and not due to willful neglect. Now, now they don't tell us exactly what does that mean. So basically, it's case by case. The IRS will determine case by case situation. Uh, let's take a look at another example just to kind of see how this works. Alexi filed her tax return 20 days after the due date. Along with the return, she remits a check of $3,000, which is the balance of the tax she owes. Disregarding any interest liabilities, compute Alex's total penalties for the period. Once again, here what we have to do is we have to assume a full month. So $3,000 times 0.5, this is for the failure to pay. Failure to pay. 0.5, which give us $15. Now there's failure to file. Again, we're going to take 3,000 times 5%, times 5%, which is 150. Once again, we're going to get a $15 credit. So it's going to be 135 plus the 15. In total, it's going to be 150. So this is the total penalties between uh, the uh, the failure to pay and failure to file. Okay, let's take a look at another example, which we have Rita forgot to pay her federal income tax on time. She, uh, when she actually filed, she reported a balance to compute Rita's failure to file penalty in each of the following situations. So here we're talking about the penalty, which is the 5% failure to file penalty. So she was two months late thousand dollar well it's going to be five percent times two month times a thousand dollar and that's going to give us one hundred dollars well there is a minimum remember there's a minimum of two fifteen twenty four the minimum amount will apply here so be careful on the exam she applied five months late and it's three thousand dollar well failure to file penalty five percent times Five month times three thousand, which is seven fifty. Okay, eight month late. Well, eight month late, four thousand uh, additional tax due. Now, remember there is a maximum. So, what's the maximum? Remember the maximum is there is a maximum of twenty five percent. Twenty five percent. Therefore, what's going to happen for number C? 
number C, it's going to be 5% times 5. 5% 5 times 5, not 8 times 5, because there's a maximum of 25% times $4,000, which will be a $1,000 penalty. Okay? Two and a half months late, two and a half months late, $3,000 additional tax due. They're trying to trick you here by tell you, telling you two, two and a half months. Two and a half months is three months, so it's 5% times three times 3,000 equal to 450 five months late due to fraud okay fraud it, it's gonna it's gonna bring in 15 percent and we have uh, five months late so 15 times 5 remember there's a limit 15 times 5 is well we're at, right we're right at the limit 15 times 5 is 75 so okay that's fine times four thousand equal to 3,000 penalty. 10 months late due to fraud, 15,000 in additional taxes. Now, remember, we're 10 months late. The maximum is 75% technically. Let's let's do this. Well, let's assume we did, so we're going to do 15% times 10 months times 15,000. Okay. Remember, it cannot be more than 75%. So simply put, this is more than 75%, okay? But let's assume, you know, we did this computation. We're going to come up to 22,500. Well, we can do that. We can do that. We only have to limit ourselves to 75% of the tax due and 15,000 times 0 0.75 is 11,250. So hopefully by looking at this example, you get an idea about failure to file penalty, failure to file. That's 5%, and there's a maximum of 25, 15% for fraud, 75% maximum. And remember, any partial month is considered a full month. Let's take a look at this example. Wade filed his federal income tax return on time, but did not remit the balance due. Compute failure to pay penalty. We're not involving interest, just failure to pay penalty in each, in each of the following situation. Four months late, 3,000. Remember the rate, the rate is 0.5% times 3,000 times, uh, times, uh, I'm sorry, times four, okay, times four months, times four months, and that's going to give us $60. Now, bear in mind, there is no minimum like the failure to file penalty. Ten months late. 0.5% times 10, and we owe $4,000, and that's going to be $200. Uh, five years late, five years late, five years late. Now, we have to understand five years late is five years, is 60 months. 60 months is five years late. Well, guess what? We are limited to, again, maximum of 25%. Well, what does that mean? It means to get the 25%, it's 0.5 times 50, which is if we take 0.5 times 50, 0.5% times 50, let me just get my calculator here. So if we take 0 0.005 times 50, that's going to give us 0 0.25, which is 25%. So that's why I limit it to 25%. That's 25% times 5,000 equal to 1,000. 250 so that's the maximum okay so make sure you now hopefully we know how to compute failure to pay and failure to file penalty and just real quick uh, civil fraud penalty just you just kind of fyi something you need to know about civil fraud penalty a 75 percent civil penalty is imposed on underpayment resulting from fraud by the taxpayer who filed a return. Now, what is a fraud? It's like intentional wrongdoing. You're, you're not, you did not make a mistake. You were not negligent, and you did this over several years. So you're doing this, okay? Now you have to keep in mind the burden. The initial burden of proof is on the IRS to show that the taxpayer acted in a way to specifically intend to evade the tax. So first, the IRS has to prove it. Once they prove it, then then it's your then then you have to prove that you did not commit fraud. So once the IRS initially has established that fraud occurred, the taxpayer then bears the burden of proof to show the evidence of uh, of the portion, the underpayment that's not attributable to fraud. So first they have to show fraud, then you have to defend yourself. So Frank underpaid his taxes by ninety thousand. The IRS can prove sixty thousand were underpayment due to fraud. Well, 
in the civet penalty, 60,000 times 75%. Now in the next session, what I would do is I will cover another common tax uh, penalty, which is failure to pay estimated taxes. Those are the common topics that are uh, that, that are tested on the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to visit my website. If you are serious about studying for your CPA exam, subscribe. I have a lot of resources that's going to help you pass. You invest in your career once, and it's a 40 to 50 year investment. Go ahead, subscribe. You might have a course, but you might need that additional help that's going to boost your score 7 to 10 percent, 7 to 10 points. That's going to get you over that 75. Study hard. I'm always here to help you, and good luck.